The Boston Bruins are in Tampa getting ready for a Friday night showdown with the Lightning. We'll look at who is in and who is out as they practiced here on Thursday. Uh, examine the Fabian Lysel question and take a quick look at just the exceptional season that Patrice Bergeron is having here on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be, as well as take a look around the NHL. Today is Thursday, April 7th, opening day around Major League Baseball, first day of the Masters, and our Boston Bruins are getting ready for a big game tomorrow night against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms, so please do smash that subscribe button. Each new episode will be automatically added to your feeds for you to download, listen, and enjoy. We're also on YouTube if you want to check out the video presentation of the podcast, as well as get some bonus clips along the way. If you can follow along on uh, Twitter at Locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my dad jokes, my hockey tweets at Ian C. McLaren. Following Tuesday's loss to the Detroit Red Wings, the Bruins had Wednesday off, back on the ice here on Thursday, getting ready for this game against the Lightning. And uh, I was waiting to see who would be at practice who is going to be absent because there are some injury questions surrounding some pretty key players uh, right now. Uh, The Bruins did gather on the ice, not practicing, were David Pasternak and Hampus Lindholm. Two, obviously, huge players for the Bruins. Pasternak uh, left a game Monday in Columbus, did not play against Detroit on Tuesday. And it appears as though he won't be ready to return for tomorrow night's game against Lightning. And Lindholm was injured during the game against Detroit, not practicing here on uh, Thursday. Now, the Bruins are in the midst of a four-game road trip. There's two games remaining on, uh, on this roadie. They will play... Like I said, Friday in Tampa, and then Sunday in Washington before returning home to play St. Louis on Tuesday. No word yet as to whether Pasternak and or Lindholm have been sent back to Boston uh, and will be ruled out for the remainder of the trip. So, with these lines going, uh, you had Marchand, Bergeron, DeBrusque at practice. Hall, Halla, and Mark McLaughlin taking Pasternak's spot. That had been occupied by Thomas Nosek during the game against Detroit. Third line remained intact, or was reunited, I should say, as Trent Frederick. Uh, he missed a game after getting banged up against Columbus. He came back for practice, so he was skating on his normal spot with Coyle and Smith. And then the fourth line reunited as well. Curtis Lazar had missed the Detroit game. He's back on the fourth line with Nick Foligno, Thomas Nosek, and Tom Bleed, Jack Stanika serving as the extra skaters. It's interesting to me to see uh, McLaughlin getting game action over Stanika. Stanika, a right hand shot. He is a natural center. Uh, could very well fill in on the Hall Hollow line, but they're giving McLaughlin that opportunity at the moment. On the back end, Riley bumped up to play with McAvoy in the absence of Lindholm, Grizzlick, Carlo, and then Forbort was rotating with Clifton and Brown. The Bruins had Swayman listed as the first goalie. I don't know if that's an indication that he will 
start tomorrow night. Talked on yesterday's podcast how he's been struggling a fair bit here since the beginning of March. Perhaps they're looking to give him some uh, more opportunities to boost his confidence with a view to having him start in the playoffs. So that was the picture from practice here on Thursday. No Lindholm, no Pasternak, and we'll have to see if either one of those guys has been sent back to Boston, if they're officially ruled out of Friday's game, and furthermore ruled out of Sunday's game against the Washington Capitals. Now Pasternak, that's a concern if he's not able to play again. He's missed a couple games. The Bruins did not go out and acquire scoring depth on the right side prior to the trade deadline. That was something that I felt they should address, an area of need. And that raises the question as to whether Fabian Lysel might be able to make the jump to the big club before the end of the season. And we're going to talk about that here in a moment. But first, a quick word about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters, odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this weekend. Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you so much again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. Check out the Locked On Now podcast as your second listen. It's a daily recap show of all the previous night's action with help from our local experts. You can find that in the Locked On NHL podcast feeds. Now, after the trade deadline, Don Sweeney did not close the door on possibly adding Fabian Lysel to either the Providence or the Boston Bruins lineup prior to the end of the season. Lysel currently playing for the Vancouver Giants. They wrap up their regular season on April 16th. Uh, Not a great team. They have lost six in a row, I believe. And they're kind of a bubble team when it comes to the Western Conference uh, playoff picture. Let me just look at the updated standings here. Uh, Vancouver Giants are in 7th place right now in the Western Conference. Uh, One point up on the Prince George Cougars and tied with the Victoria Royals with 50 points. Uh, Vancouver does have two games in hand on Victoria and three games in hand on Prince George. So... Um, at the moment, despite this six-game losing streak, it looks as though they might be able to uh, clinch a spot. Having said that, not 100% sure if it's six or eight teams that advance. I would imagine it's eight. But even if it's six, they're one point back of Spokane with three games in hand there. So they still have a good chance. Um, now, when it comes to Lysel, so he could join the Bruins following the regular season if the Vancouver misses the playoffs. If they hang on to a playoff spot, he probably wouldn't be available to the Bruins until the postseason. If they don't make the playoffs, he could join them with a handful of regular seasons season games to go and possibly insert him into the lineup to see what they might have in him. Either way, 
I would say expectations should be tempered. Probably not realistic to think he can jump in as a top six contributor right off the bat, but he could bring some speed, skill, energy off the bench, kind of like Tyler Sagan did in 2011. Um, now with Posternak injured, banged up, not 100%, Whatever the situation may be, they could very well have a need to bring a right-hand shot into the lineup. Uh, Mark McLaughlin is there, like I said, but Lysel's ceiling is a bit higher. He might be a guy that you want to see what he might be able to bring to the table. Now, he hasn't really blown the WHL away. Uh, in rookie scoring, he ranks 12th uh, overall with 21 goals, 33 assists through 54 games. Now, I should say he's only played in 47 games, so his point-per-game average is a lot better than some of these guys. Matthew Savoy for Winnipeg. Leads the pack with 84 points in 61 games. So he's well behind that. But at the same time, he does lead the Vancouver Giants uh, in scoring. And that's pretty impressive for a guy who is playing his first season in North America. You know, there's a huge adjustment for guys coming over from Europe uh, adjusting to the North American game, the North American ice, the North American culture. Uh, the Swedish-born player lived over there all his life, coming over here, scoring 21 goals, adding 33 assists in his first season in North America is fairly impressive. You know, he's not blowing away the WHL, like I said. He's not setting records, but... It's a very positive uh, first step. And, you know, they sent him there to kind of, uh, yeah, introduce him to the North American game. And he has certainly um, made an impact for the Vancouver Giants. Maybe not enough to get them into the postseason, but that could be a good thing for, for the Bruins, like I said. He's skilled, he's quick, uh, he'll be coming in fresh, ready to contribute. And so I'm not saying root against the Giants not to make the playoffs, but I'm not not saying that either if, if, you, uh, if you catch my drift. Uh, but at the moment, it does look like they will make the playoffs unless... Uh, Prince George is able to catch them. They're one point back, but Vancouver has three games in hand. They could make the playoffs with a record right now of 23-35-4, which is not great, a 4.03 point percentage. Right now they're seventh in the Western Conference with a 4.03 point percentage and can still make the playoffs. That's pretty wild. Um, so that would mean, yeah, April 16th is when their regular season ends. That could take them to the end of the Bruins regular season, which is the 29th. And, uh, you know, do you want to give a guy his first look in the playoffs? Probably not. So it might be better for the Bruins and for Lysel's chances to play for the Bruins this season if Vancouver uh, does not make the WHL playoffs. So that's the situation there. Uh, again, Pasternak, it's concerning that he's banged up. Hopefully they are just being cautious. It's not a serious injury in that it doesn't come to needing him. Uh, Mark McLaughlin has played well for the Bruins since jumping up after being signed as a college free agent. But he's not a guy that you want to rely on as a top six uh, in, the, in the playoffs as well. Now, one guy who has been playing 
out of his mind this year is Patrice Bergeron. I want to talk about uh, an article that was posted on the score this morning by John Matisse. Uh, but first, thank you so much again for making Locked On Bruins your first listen every day. The podcast is free and available on all platforms. If you are in your fantasy hockey league right now and you want to get a leg up, check out the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Show. Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone will help give you the edge in your fantasy league playoffs, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now, uh, it's incredible how good Patrice Bergeron is playing this year at 36 years of age. The Bruins' longest tenure player, first line center, is the clear front runner for the Selkie Trophy. John Matisse wrote on the score this morning. If he receives a finalist nod, it'll be the 11th straight year he's finished top three in voting. And if he wins, he'll break Bob Gainey's record and stand alone in hockey history with five Selkie trophies. Clear first ballot Hall of Famer. Going to have his number retired. And it's not a courtesy vote or just trying to help him get that record this year. It would be very well earned with Bergeron on the ice at five on five the Bruins have suppressed shot attempts shots on goal goals and expected goals at unreal levels Bergeron's on ice defensive metrics tower over the other 239 forwards who've logged 700 minutes or more at five on five this season Bergeron is in the 96 to 100th percentile in all four categories. Of course, he benefits from skating beside Brad Marchand, uh, Jake DeBrusque now, David Pasternak, Craig Smith at times. But he ranks first among all NHLers with a minimum 700 5 on 5 minutes in Corsi 4 percentage relative. That's a metric that aims to measure the gap in shot share when a player's on the ice versus when he's off it. The Bruins are an above average possession team, but that jumps by a whopping 15% when Bergeron is on the ice. Um, Taking strictly goals for and against, Boston has scored 41 and allowed 22 with Bergeron on the ice at 5 on 5. A 65% goal share. Um, He averages over 18 minutes a night against the opposition's top players. Key contributor on the penalty kill. And um, what special Matisse writes about this season is that he's on pace to set personal bests in several defensive metrics despite being in his mid-30s and also while scoring 54 points in 62 games. And he's also 62.4% success rate in the face-off circle. Matisse writes, Watching Bergeron do his thing with the Stanley Cup, four Selkies, nearly 1,400 total NHL games games to his name. You can't help but wonder if we're witnessing arguably the greatest defensive forward of all time play the best defensive hockey of his career at age 36? The answer might be yes. And he's likely crafted a bulletproof Selkie case. It's all within the context of it possibly being his final season as well. Remember, he's an unrestricted free agent, hasn't committed beyond this season. It would be cool to see him go out playing the best hog of his career. Even better to see him go out as a Stanley Cup champion. But at the same time, they could really use him for the next couple of years uh, at the very least. That's it for today's episode. Kind of a short and sweet one today. You can probably hear it in my voice. Battling cough. Not really a cough, but sinus, throat. 
my shoulder still bothering me going to physio later uh, no Bruins action tonight probably check out the dropout finale uh, which has been a very good series about Elizabeth Holmes uh, watch some more better call Saul maybe check out some baseball very excited for the Blue Jays this season but do check out the Locked On Red Sox podcast as well. Uh, they're going to have you covered all year long for all your baseball information. Thanks so much for listening. Hope you have a great week. We'll be back tomorrow to preview the game against the Lightning. Perhaps have a guest on sooner than later. Everybody's so busy right now. It's it's hard to track down people to um, yeah jump on, but... We press on, and uh, again, thanks so much for all the support here on the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast, your favorite team every single day.